The history of mental health care begins with a tragic chapter marked by misunderstanding and inhumane treatments, especially psychiatric asylums. Mental illness was frequently linked to supernatural phenomena like demonic possession. Most treatments had a religious or superstitious character. During the Middle Ages, families or religious organizations frequently provided care for those struggling with mental illnesses. In order to drive out demons, they were occasionally treated with techniques like exorcisms or severe physical treatments. One of the barbaric physical treatments was trepanation, which involves drilling or cutting a hole into the skull. The purpose was believed that this procedure would allow evil spirits or demons to escape from the patient's head, thereby curing their mental illness. This procedure, which dates back to the Middle Ages, was exceedingly risky and frequently resulted in illness, brain damage, or even death. However, several historical documents suggest that patients occasionally survived and even got stronger, probably as a result of the pressure on the brain being released. Though many of the treatments for mental illness remained cruel by the Renaissance and early modern periods, understanding of the condition had started to gradually move in the direction of medicine. The first dedicated institutions for the mentally ill began to appear. The infamous Bethlehem Royal Hospital, Bedlam in London, established in 1247, is one of the oldest psychiatric hospitals. However, conditions were often brutal, with patients frequently subjected to chains and physical restraint. This method was widely used to treat people who were thought to be violent or uncontrollable. Isolated from the outside world, people with mental diseases were frequently kept in cramped, dark and often filthy cells. Even though it was believed that solitude would calm people down, it usually resulted in severe mental anguish. Drawing blood from a patient was also a popular treatment used to balance the body's humor. Bloodletting was based on the humoral theory of medicine. Laxatives and emetics were also used for purging the body of supposed poisons. The notion that suffering could heal insanity was often used to defend the use of corporal punishment. Patients were beaten, whipped, or subjected to other physical punishments in an effort to try and correct their behavior. Rotational therapy with spinning chairs. Created by Erasmus Darwin, it was to create disorientation. This was thought to shock the brain into a more stable condition. The patients received a variety of water treatments, such as immersion in water tanks, cold baths, and cold water showers. These methods were frequently employed to soothe anxious patients, thinking it could shock their system back to health. It was originally believed that depriving patients of visible input, for example, by keeping them in quiet, dark rooms for an extended amount of time, would help them become calmer and more controlled. But more often than not, it just made them feel even more enraged. The ethical treatment movement began in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, led by famous people such as William Tuke in England and Philippe Pinel in France. This movement advocated better living conditions, engaging activities and compassionate care with a focus on treating mentally ill people in a more humane manner. Nevertheless, asylums soon filled up too quickly. Due to limited resources and a huge number of patients, the initial moral treatment values were often violated. A lot of asylums returned to using physical restraints, isolation and other severe measures when conditions deteriorated. Common treatments included cold water baths, purging and bloodletting. Neglect and abuse were rampant. Without their agreement, patients were frequently given experimental treatments like lobotomies and the earliest versions of electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. Numerous reports and investigations into asylums revealed shocking conditions. For instance, in the late 19th century, 
Nellie Bly, born Elizabeth Cochrane Seaman, became a pioneering investigative journalist. She faked being insane in order to be accepted into the Blackwell's Island Women's Lunatic Asylum in New York City in 1887. She revealed the horrifying conditions and patient abuse through her undercover work, which she documented in a series of articles titled 10 Days in a Madhouse. A public uproar and important changes in mental health care resulted from this. Antipsychotics and antidepressants, two types of psychiatric drugs that were first developed in the middle of the 20th century, changed the treatment of mental disease and decreased the necessity for long-term institutionalization. The idea that patients would benefit more from community-based care than from institutionalization led to a dramatic shift towards deinstitutionalization starting in the 1950s and 1960s. Numerous asylums were shut down and patients were freed, often without adequate community support, posing a new set of problems such as homelessness and inadequate mental health care. There were continuous reform efforts in mental health care in the latter part of the 20th century and the early 21st century. Patients' rights were elevated, community mental health clinics were developed, and outpatient care was encouraged. But the stigma and the difficulties in providing mental health care are remains of the asylum era, and they still have an impact on the current mental health care system. Modern society faces a rising number of mental health problems despite significant advances in mental health care from the dreadful, cruel methods of the past. A number of complicated related variables, such as the fast-paced nature of modern living, increased stress levels, social isolation, financial strains, and the widespread impact of social media, which may worsen worry and feelings of inadequacy, are responsible for this rise. In addition, more people are seeking assistance and talking openly about their challenges as a result of increased understanding and a decline in the stigma associated with mental health, which has increased the exposure of mental health issues. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. Subscribing is completely free and it really helps us out so you can stay updated with our future videos. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.